Hey everyone! Welcome back to my channel and a very warm welcome if you're new. It's spooky month and with Halloween nearly upon us, I have a very exciting video for you today. If you've been on the channel for a while, you'll know that I'm fairly new to doll customizing and we don't have the biggest spooky lineup just yet. Last Halloween, I treated myself to giving Frankie over here a new face up, but this year I wanted to do something more exciting. So, a few doll friends and I got together in Stitch Recreations Discord server and decided to do a collab. There's a whole bunch of us bringing you some excellent spooky goodness this year, so be sure to watch until the end of the video if you want to see what everyone else made. For now, let's crawl into today's video. <laughs> so, why is today's video so exciting? Well, if you know me, you may know that I absolutely adore stop motion animation. In fact, my love for stop motion is one of the things that led me to discovering doll customization in the first place. One of the movies that helped to spark this love is Tim Burton's Corpse Bride. One of my all time favorites. And ever since I've gotten into the hobby of doll making, I've wanted to make an Emily doll. She's my favorite character in the movie, and I love everything about her, from her design to her personality, and even the relationship between her and Victor. Now, I know that a ton of great doll artists have already made her, and I'll leave links to some of my favorites in the description, but I hope you'll enjoy the video regardless. Let's just consider this a little trick or treat for me. To make my Emily doll, I'm going to combine parts from a few different Monster High girls. Laguna has the closest face shape in my opinion, apart from her fin ears, so I'm going to combine her with parts of the Skeleta doll and parts of Gulia here. She's gonna be quite the hybrid. Let's start by removing Laguna's fishy arms, we won't need those. And while we're at it, let's steal Gulia's right arm. To prep the dolls, I used some 100% acetone to remove their factory paint. I ran out of cotton pads, so I had to work a little harder to get it all off. Once the face is clean, I wipe it off with a baby wipe to get rid of any leftover acetone. Then, I take some small scissors and cut the hair off close to the scalp until she has a buzz cut like this. Before I forget, I quickly cut off Laguna's fin ears with a craft knife. I don't think Emily has ears at all, so we can just leave it like this for now. Once they're both clean, we can dunk their heads in boiling water and pop them off the neck pegs. This gives us access to the inside of the scalp so that we can scrape around to pull the remaining hair plugs into the head. Then it's just a matter of removing it with some tweezers and we have a nice clean canvas to work with. Since she's getting blue hair, I also wipe off her scalp paint. Now we can get into the fun part, combining the two bodies. I'm essentially going to be swapping out her chest, so I use a marker to draw lines where both bodies need to be cut. I do the same with her leg and ankles. At first I tried cutting it with this little saw, but the plastic is really springy and doesn't want to be cut into. I ended up borrowing my dad's Dremel tool, which was very scary and satisfying at the same time. This is so much better than the saw! It does kick up a lot of plastic though, so I did most of it off camera for fear of scratching my lens. But with that done, we have some nice clean parts to work with. Before gluing her back together, I made sure to check where all the moving parts in her body is, because I didn't want to accidentally glue her into a static position. To reattach her foot, I drill two small holes using my hand drill and insert a wire for some added stability. I do the same with her spine and lower torso, as well as her leg. Then I mix up a two-part epoxy glue, the strongest fast setting glue that I have, and glue everything in place, careful not to touch the moving mechanisms inside. I taped everything in place and let that cure overnight. Phew, everything can still move. Because her dress exposes quite a bit of her skin, I didn't want to just leave it at that though, so 
I put on some gloves and mix up equal parts of epoxy putty. The mixing process for this stuff is always kind of gross and crumbly before it fully combines. But eventually you get a blob of grey clay-like material that is perfect for filling in holes like these. To make sure I don't sculpt over her hip joint, I first put a bit of tin foil. This way it can still move and I use less putty. I fill in her leg and bulk up the other leg a bit to give her more curviness on that side, like it is in the movie. Then I begin the process of filling in her chest. For the most part, this area is covered with skin, apart from her rib cage on one side. This takes a couple passes and a lot of smoothing with water, but eventually I get a shape that I'm happy with. For her foot, I begin by just filling in the gaps. Then I place a flat disc of clay and begin building the shape of her loose skin. I try my best to smooth the transition before sculpting the folds and rough edges. I also decided to make her shoulder bone a bit more angular with a craft knife because I think it looks more realistic that way. Before sanding her, I remembered that Laguna has these holes where her fins used to be, so I filled them in with a bit of epoxy glue. I use a variety of tools to sand her, including these little rasps I found. During this phase, you can smooth out all the bumps and correct shapes that maybe came out a bit wonky before. Like making her hip a bit more angular in the hopes that the silhouette would more closely resemble bone. With the sanding done, I want to make her a dress pattern before we paint her, so I wrap her body in a layer of cling foam and a layer of masking tape. This is probably the easiest way to make custom doll patterns in my opinion. When she's sufficiently mummified, I use a marker to draw guidelines for how I want the bodice to look. It has an asymmetrical pointed hem and a sweetheart neckline. I also draw lines where the seams will be. And I mark off where the hole needs to go to showcase her ribs. Once I'm happy with the shape, I start cutting the pattern off her, careful not to cut through any of the pattern pieces. I cut off all the excess that we don't need, and we're left with patterns we can trace onto a scrap piece of paper. I add seam allowances and mark which pieces need to go where before cutting those out too. I go about the skirt in a similar way. Now we need to cover her in plastic wrap and masking tape one more time to make her shoes. I do this so that I know there will be enough wiggle room to get her feet in and out once the shoes are done. To make them, I decide to use frog's eggs. I think these are called friendly form in other countries, and they are essentially little plastic balls that activate with heat. So, to soften them, I pour them into a cup of freshly boiled water until they turn clear. They can then be taken out and molded like clay. This stuff hardens quickly, so it's not perfect for high detail sculpting, but since her heels are very simple, I thought it was good enough. After sculpting a basic sole around her foot, I take another piece in the shape of a crescent moon to make the tip of the shoe. While they're still soft, I also make sure to stand her up so that they dry flat at the bottom. Then I use some broken needles to form the base of the heels. I mark off where to cut them and snip them off at the right height. Ah! Ow! Now I can form the heel around them using some more plastic. And there we go, doll heels. They're a bit lumpy, but she can stand on her own with them, which is pretty cool. 
Another thing we need to do before we can paint her is the reroute, and I'm using brushed acrylic yarn this time. I'm going to combine these two colors, and we'll also need something to tie it onto, and a pet brush. First, I measure out a length of yarn that's twice the length I want her hair to be. Then I cut several pieces. Once I have a whole bunch to work with, I tie them to the little coat hanger like this. Now we can gently comb through it with the pet brush, starting from the bottom and working our way up. This releases all the fibers, which can then be straightened to create silky smooth doll hair. Instead of making wefts with glue though, I'm simply cutting the fibers off the hanger, separating little tufts and rerouting them as you normally would. I reroute thoroughly around the hairline and mark where I want her new part line to go. The rest can be rooted slightly less densely. While doing this, I was watching my friend Lucia's channel and noticed that she unwinds the yarn strands before combing it out. I don't know why it never occurred to me, but this is so genius! It makes the process of combing them out much quicker and you lose a little bit less thickness. Nice! Eventually, after what felt like forever, she's finally rooted. I love the subtle highlights. To set all that hard work in place, I'm squeezing some all-purpose tacky glue into her neck hole and squishing the head around to ensure all the hair plugs are covered on the inside. With that done, we can finally move on to color changing her and covering up all this putty. I mix a custom color using Vallejo Game Air paints in the colors Dead White, Magic Blue, and Black, as well as some green alcohol ink. Just for fun, I decided to try out this metallic medium as well. Laguna is just a bit too grey, so I'm going for a slightly bluer tone than she is at the moment, kind of like a dusty duck egg. Then I mask off the bony bits and take her outside to spray her with my airbrush. It took about two coats to become opaque. Now we can unmask her bones and paint the leftover putsy on her hip using the same Vallejo paints in a nice bony color. To age them, I mix a very watery brown and let that run into all the dents and cracks. I then use a brush with water on it to quickly fade the color out before it dries. With that done, it's looking a bit too dark, so let's dry brush some lighter bone color over that again to bring out the details. Yes, that looks great! While that dries, let's shift our attention back to her dress. I have three different white fabrics here, one that's called cheesecloth, I think, one that's just white cotton to layer lace on top of, and one that's an actual cheesecloth because I like how see-through it is. I first cut the pattern pieces for her bodice from the stretchy cotton. Then, with some editing magic, I sew the pieces together like this. I also sew darts at the neckline, and now we can ham it all around. This will serve as a base for the lace to be sewn onto. I have this for the brunt of the texture and this thinner, delicate lace trim to add to the edges. I sew those first, then begin layering pieces of lace all over the bodice. This consisted mostly of me fudging it and tacking it in place until it looks good, so I'm afraid I can't give you a better tutorial on that one. The stitches inside are also pretty awful, but it's fine, nobody's gonna see that. I still love how it came out. Now, because it has all those little stitches on the inside, we're gonna need to strengthen it with glue so it won't unravel when we cut that hole to expose her ribs. I just used regular white school glue and rubbed it into the fabric with my fingertip, before positioning it so it won't dry completely flat. Her skirt is very simple. I simply fold a piece of this fabric in half and cut the pattern piece I drew on the fold. I don't think this fabric has a right or wrong side, so I simply fold the skirt in half again to cut a little slit down the fold. This will be the back of her dress. Then I sew up a few centimeters on the other side as well to finish the front of the dress. 
To reduce bulk, cut off the excess after sewing. There we go, that looks great. Now we just need to sew it to the bodice like so. I then proceed to snip away at the bodice to create the hole. With the dress done, it's time to make it look like it was buried for a few years. The first step is to rough up the edges by cutting away bits and pieces all around the bottom of the skirt. And once I've done that, I also stretch and twist the fabric to get all the threads to expose themselves. I make her veil in pretty much the same fashion. This is another fun part. We can paint everything. In the movie, her dress isn't pure white, it has these grayish blue tints to it. So I lay down a sheet of plastic and wet the dress by dipping it in water. This is a technique I first saw on Delightful's channel and it works wonders for letting paint really seep into fabric. Then I mix a watery blue color and apply it to the dress. I first apply it to the torn bottom hem, and then drag it upwards to create these fold lines. I do this all around the skirt, as well as the edges of the bodice piece. The veil gets the exact same treatment, and once it's dry, it looks like this. Oh, I love it so much. To finish it off and really give it that Tim Burton feel, I'm using three shades of blue embroidery thread to sew swirls onto it. These swirls are an iconic characteristic of Tim Burton's films and you can see them in almost all his movies from Nightmare Before Christmas to Batman. In fact, it's one of the first things we see in Corpse Bride while Victor is drawing the moth. Or is it a butterfly? Let me know which one you think it is. In the movie, her veil actually has the more prominent swirls, but because this is such a delicate fabric, I opted for white swirls using regular thread instead. The final touch is gluing teeny tiny flat back pearls to her bodice to represent beads. Off camera, I spray painted her shoes white and covered them in a layer of UV resin to smooth out the worst of the bumps. Now we just need to paint her bouquet and her headdress. They also get a layer of dry brushing to bring out the sculpting. Phew! That was a lot of accessories, wasn't it? What do you say we turn our attention back to the main peanut, Emily herself? Now that the paint is nice and dry, I want to reattach her head before we seal her. I don't want to risk cracking anything, so I cut the neck peg shorter and even trim those little tabs at the sides. This is really all you need to secure the heads anyway. And with her head back on, I grab myself pastels and start working a darker blue into her foot folds, toes, joints and anywhere else she might have natural shadows. It's looking great already! So I kept going and added blushing to her face too. I sharpen her chin slightly by adding shadows around her chin and jawline and add some pastels to emphasize her cheekbones and forehead. I also add shading around her eyes, nose, and mouth and add some black here and there where her skin is starting to decay. Most of the shading was around her eyes, which look a bit raccoony now, but makes sense when you consider that they're supposed to look sunken in. Okay, now we can spray seal her. I don my brand new extra safe gas mask and protective goggles and give her a spray of Vallejo matte varnish. Once dry, we can start sketching in the basic shapes of the face up. Emily has big round eyes, even bigger than Laguna's. So I draw her eyes way past the mold and much rounder using a light blue pencil. 
I also sketch her eyebrows and where the gap in her cheek is. With that done, I take her outside again and give her a spray of airbrush MSC. This gives her face some tooth to work on and I can start adding details like highlights to her nose. In the movie, her mouth is a bit crooked, so I draw her lips lopsided on purpose and try to give her a shy smile. The same goes for her brows, they are not exactly even. I go back in with pastel to add colour to her lips and purple around her eyes. To create the illusion of a skeleton nose, I'm drawing slanted black nostrils. She also has a crack on her forehead, so I add that and darken her eyebrows a bit. From here on, it's just about darkening what I already drew and going back and forth between pencils and pastels until I'm happy. I sketch in her teeth that you can see through the hole in her cheek and sketch in her bottom lashes. At this point, I decided to switch over to acrylic paint to finish the job. I start by blocking in the whites of her eyes, since it's such a big area of her face, and add her teeny tiny little teethies. As soon as her eyes were white, she started looking so much more like Emily to me. With black, I darken her gaping nostrils and the hole in her cheek. I want them to really look like voids, you know? But for her eyebrows, I used a dark navy colour so that it would fit her hair. I used that same colour to outline the hole in her cheek and add specks to it so it won't look as cartoony. With the light blue, I highlight areas of her face like around her eyebrows, the bridge of her nose, and around her mouth. I used that same dark blue I mixed before to outline her eyes. I wanted her face to look more relaxed, so I gave her a bit of eyelid instead of making her eyes really wide open. Then for her lash line, I used black acrylics again. And we can't forget about her pink lips. They're such a pretty accent color to her otherwise monochrome palette. Shout out to this drop of water I did not notice for like 10 minutes because I was so focused on trying to get her lower lashes right. Her lips were looking a bit flat so I added a darker shade around the outer corners and the lip line for more dimension. As a final step, I switch back to pastels momentarily to shade her eyes and use a dotting tool to add her pupils. You may have noticed that I left out her upper lashes and that's because I want to give her 3D lashes this time. I cut some human fake lashes to the right length, but they're a bit too fluffy and Emily has thin spidery ones. So to help them clump together like bad mascara, <laughs> I paint them with black acrylics. Here you can see the difference between ones I've painted and the unpainted ones. I opted for epoxy glue to glue them in place. I feel like I have the most control with it because it has such a thin consistency, but it sets very quickly. They were a bit long, so I did end up cutting them shorter off camera. With her face done, we can unwrap her hair burrito and reveal... <laughs> Don't worry, we'll tame this mane. After a quick brush, she's back to looking like she did right after I rerouted her. I do want to add a bit more texture, so I give her some curls at the bottom of her hair. Now we just dress her up and... What do you think? I absolutely adore her. I think she is as close to the movie as I could possibly get her, and I'm really proud of how she came out. She was such a fun project to work on. Plus, she's part of a collab, and that was super fun. Remember to stay until the end of the video to see what my partners made. This is the first doll that I've done, like, major body modifications on, and it was really scary at first, but once I'd done them, I thought, hey, that wasn't so bad. 
which makes me excited for doing that to dolls in the future. I'm also very, very fond of her dress. I love how the colors and embroidery came out. I think the only thing I might change is moving the hole up a bit more, <laughs> but her ribs still peek through, so I think it's okay. I hope to improve my skills when it comes to shoes, too. It was fun trying out something a little different, so I want to keep pushing myself with that. What do you think of Emily? Is there anything you would have done differently? Any specific part of her you like? Let me know in the comments down below. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video because I absolutely loved making it. I think it's my favorite doll to date. <laughs> Be sure to check out my collab partners and all the amazing dolls they made. Joining me in this collab is Lucia Strange Universe, Shelby KG, Insanely Creating, Bumble Crafty, Stitchwick Creations, Blurred Colors Art, Silver Griffin, Dolly Mixtures, and Heliophobiant. I'll make a playlist with all our videos and link it in the description if you want to binge. <laughs> if you like this video, and you think I deserve it, please consider giving it a big old fashioned thumbs up and leaving a comment to appease the YouTube gods. <laughs> hmm. We haven't made a boy doll yet this year. What do you say we do that in the next video? If you don't want to miss that when it comes out, boop that sub button, stick around, and as always, stay golden. I'll see you next time. Bye. I've done like half of the head, but why are you still bald?